My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I'm coming from uh, near Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia. I'm Roya Mattis, and I am the creator of Sheena's Tribe, and I also lead a sales um, area of women, family across the country of several thousand people in sales. Awesome. So I got a question for you. Yes. You had a post on your Instagram, and it talked about supporting female woman entrepreneurs and all that. Here's my yes. question. How do you support individuals without handicapping them? Because to me, a lot of people think support is handing them things or mm -hmm. sometimes they could have that entitlement mentality that, oh, just because you have your position and you're able to help, help. But what does help and support mean? Mm, there is a difference. There's a difference. And I guess the clarifying difference is if, I, if you see support as being my, me doing it for you versus being someone that is there if you fall to remind you how powerful you are, therein lies the difference. So to me, support is more empowerment and it is accessing and utilizing and gifting tools when you feel like your back's against the wall. Mostly though, an amazing leader just reminds and empowers the person that they believe in how how awesome they are and so when people get their back against the wall one of the number one things i remind them is you've got to seek the window in the brick wall there is always a window find it so that's what support looks like all right so my next question would be in this you obviously got a lot of experience in sales a lot of people have the perception that sales is selling somebody or making somebody purchase or get a service that they may not need. That's why they have sales. And it's got a lot of uh, negative energy with it yeah. when a lot of people talk about it. Now, yeah. I also know that, you know, everything that we wear, everything that we have, I mean, my Samsung phone was sold to me by some, like, I didn't take it personal when they were selling it to me when it was overpriced. And I may not have needed it. I could have survived with my older one, but I yeah. got a new one. So how do you different, what do you explain to those individuals to have a different perception of it? Because yeah. if they remove that, imagine how much more money and how much more success, I mean, things will change for them. So how do you go about doing that? What's your experience? Absolutely. I actually had the same resistance. So it's a great question. I was approached in, uh, it was almost 19 years ago now to join this direct sales company. I had a lot of stigmas and connotations. As a matter of fact, I was running hotel properties. I saw this happy, huggy group of women in the lobby, and I did everything I could to avoid them. In fact, uh, if you've ever seen a woman outrun another woman in heels, I won. <laughs> and I got behind the front desk wall because I, I always imagine people going door to door. You're hiding from the from the person at the door and you're being as quiet as possible till they walk away. And that's what I thought of in sales. And so we do not know what we do not know. So I think number one thing is what you said is to, is to grasp the concept that the things that we enjoy, the luxuries and the necessities all come from someone providing something we decided we needed or wanted, right? Now the connotation comes from someone pushing what we don't really want and feeling like we are we don't know how to get out of that awkward situation right so when i chose what i chose the first thing i asked myself is do i feel like it's a bet one of the best values if i offer it to someone do i feel like i'm giving them something better than they would have gotten otherwise the second thing is do i really believe in what i have what i'm gifting and when i started my business um in selling the the product that i sell I actually wasn't a, a user, so I went on reputation. And then uh, the beginning year was all about accessing opinions. So I didn't come in saying, you need this. I came in saying, do you think it's as incredible as it's statistically shown to be? And so that gives me the third thing that, that gave me confidence in selling. So was you that didn't sell it to them, you asked for opinion. Me. What's that? So you didn't sell it, you asked for opinion. I ask for opinions in the beginning a lot, and I continue to do that when new things come out. I do surveys, opinions, I'm open, I listen, and then I love that it has a 100% guarantee. So the product for me has to have a guarantee so that if someone feels like they made a buying mistake, they don't feel like they're stuck with it. 
I think the last is when you go in to have a conversation to share something with someone, it's about sharing. So the basis of anything in sales is let me hear what your need is and let me see whether or not what I have to offer will fulfill that. And if it doesn't, I don't know if you ever saw, um, I think it was Miracle on 34th Street where the Santa Claus starts recommending them to go to another store to get XYZ toy for Christmas. And the general manager of Macy's was appalled. And then, but their store sales went up. If you can be that type of person that understands your demographics around you, you really listen to the need of the person. It may not be in my product but I might be able to help you. So sales is really helping when it's done right. It's servicing, helping, and filling a need. And if it's not yours, if it's not through you, recommend where they could get it. My question is this. Would you happen to know what's been your longest time frame sell from the moment that you share with them and the moment they said yes? Because... A lot of individuals in sales, they, I know what mine has been, and I know that a lot of times individuals, they get into sales. In some industries, the gratification of the results that you get is not instant. So yeah. you have to wait. And, and I tell you the example that I know is the, the, the broker that I use for leasing my cars. I go to him every four years. So in between, he's not hassling me unless I call him and I want to refer him somebody else. So he knows every four years, my lease is up and I go there or every three years, whatever, I think it's three years. So every three years, he calls me back and we do it. So during that period of time, and I've been doing that for like 10 years. So I bought almost four cars for myself from him. And obviously I've re referred a lot of other people to. But to me, it's like, he doesn't get upset that I come to him every three years, Right. right. So right. what's been your longest from the moment that you start a conversation with a potential client and yeah. what's been the longest where they said, yes, I want it. And I want to know how much patience did you have? Are you one of those that, people? That, that's, that's, that's a great question. I'm testing you here. Now, uh, I want to just piggyback off of what you shared going back to that gentleman. If you are in any kind of business, I hope that, and even representing yourself, when someone does something for you, like refer, like you said, you refer people to him or bring you business or um, accent and enhance your reputation, showing an extra level of appre unexpected appreciation goes a really, really long way. Uh, so I pay attention. Like if I'm really loyal somewhere, are they giving me the little somethings every now and then that reminds me that they feel like I matter? That's really important. So um, the longest sale has been, uh, I'll tell you the longest sale and then I'm going to tell you one other thing because I think a lot of people get involved because they think they can, whether or not they know enough people, right? So my longest, just to sell the product and I sell skincare and color cosmetics. Now, I mentor people outside of my business. I'm a transformational coach. In addition, I've been in 800 hours of immersion training, everywhere from business to sales to human relations to female-specific things, um, money, time management, etc. cetera, coaching. Um, so in my specific product, it should be quick. Like, you try this, you put on half your face, if it makes a difference, buy it. It has 100% guarantee it's cheaper than what you're going to buy in the department store. It took me eight months for this gal to buy just the skincare that was going to cost her like for the whole line that she wanted was like under a hundred bucks. And it was because she was so loyal to another brand. And finally, finally, <laughs> I said, you know what, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to just gift. I trust you now. We've had this rapport for eight months. I'm going to give you a full set for a month. And if you don't want it, you're going to give it back to me. If you love it, you'll pay me for it then. <laughs> and she transferred. <laughs> after that because she fell in love but she was so loyal to her other brand honestly because it was more expensive so she thought it worked better so sometimes we think because it has a higher price it's better and it's not always so that was a patience of a long sale now I have one that I have never sold 
and I'm still highly successful multi-million dollar earner in the or a, a seller in this company and um, it's to some immediate family members so uh, my immediate some of my immediate family members have never ever ever purchased my low dollar item products and, and, and I it's so fun my because how many family members did you have how many how many uncles and cousins and nephews could you possibly have to sell well, like I mean, it, it happens in real estate yeah. also too say it again it happens in real estate people get into real estate they're like listen i got a big family and i'm like uh you know, it's cool, you know, do that, try that. But how often does your uncle or cousin or mom or grandma are going to go looking for a house? You yeah. sell it to them. Let's say you sell the entire the family. Let's yeah. say there's five potential buyers. You sell all five. Yeah. My question is, where is the sixth sell going to come from? Yeah, yeah. You got five in the bag. I'm cool. You made $20,000 each. You made 100000 Your first year, success. A lot of respect to you. You did good. What are you going to do second year? Yeah. So Here's to me, it's our, like you got to be able to cultivate that relationship. And you talked about communications. Yes. Here's the number one thing to know in anything that you want to do in life in general is, are you willing to trust yourself enough to figure it out in the process? And if you want something badly enough, you just ask the baseline question, when I get stuck, am I willing to figure it out? And if the answer is yes, go for it. Because no one, no one is worse off for trying things and growing. If you use something as a stepping stone, it becomes better. But I will tell you, that was a learning process. Like just the willingness to try. Some of you guys are not willing to try because you're so afraid to fail. And that was actually my number one fear that came with me into business 19 years ago. I was so afraid of failing that the higher power, in my opinion, made me fail hard three times my first year, so bad. I had to face my deepest fear. And so the thing that I learned about failure is this, you cannot fail if you do not quit. So simply get up one more time, then you fall down and you win. And the second part of failure is any But you know that that is very easy to say, but it's very hard in, in reality. I've been there, and that's not that. I mean, it takes an extraordinary amount of willpower, yes. mindset, faith. I mean, it it is not easy. Well, I mean, we sometimes look at it. That's that. But I'm saying a lot of times we look at the fights and we see the guy goes, you know, he's knocked down on on his back, and you know, you see the family members, you see the uncles, cousins, wife, girlfriend, fiance saying, "Get up!" This is, but sometimes. It doesn't work like the movies. Yeah. Well, here's what I want you to imagine next time. Because now you know you know better. Now that you know, you'll know better. Here's what I want you to imagine. Anything that's ever, really, anything in this life, in this, on this earth, that has come out beautifully has come with a push. Flowers come out of the ground with a push. So do trees. Butterflies have to push through the cocoon for their wings to be strong. Babies come into this earth with a push, diamonds under pressure. So if you want the life of your imagination, you have to be willing to do the thing that makes things great. And that is push through the hard surfaces, the hard cocoons, the hard moments. When you make a muscle, it has to burn. So that is the law of life. If you want a mediocre life, if you want to have a subpar existence, if you want to lay your head on the pillow and take your last breath with every regret in the world, then quit when it gets hard. But if you want a taste of how great you can be and you want to gain to be a little bit better than you were yesterday, then remember that you're just like everything else on this earth. The beauty within you comes through pushing up through the hard things. So how do we get that mindset? I think it just starts with the concept and the idea. Um, today, I was working out with my little guy, Zayden. He's seven. And I haven't been working out through COVID. I will admit it. I have been the one. I eat well, but I wasn't working out. The gym closed, and I just stopped going. I'm like, that is enough. That is enough. And I actually have come up with a great concept um, that will take you beyond your own body. 
uh, that I'm going to go live with in the next week or so. But today he said to me while I'm working out, he said, okay, mommy, you're in a plank. Imagine there's baby ducks underneath and you don't want to crush them. And then when I was doing my squats, imagine that you're dodging the bullets and you have to go down really fast. And when I'm doing my leg pumps, imagine you're in lava and you have to jump through the lava fast, right? We can create any kind of scenario in our mind. This is where the power is. And I'm a, uh, I don't know how much time we have, but I'm going to end with this, uh, this part with this one thought and this thing that rewired. So our subconscious mind, the way that we envision things is everything, right? And so there is something called the power of the even more statement. Have you ever heard this for re rewiring the subconscious mind? I I've heard of it, but I'd like for you to share it with everybody else yeah. so I can learn. So there's a lot of different ways to access the, the, the old thinking our mind has in sur from survival, the archaic parts of it, the experiences you've had, what you've come that you did with in your genetics that you didn't even ask for. And that operates a lot of our life until we become conscious to change it otherwise. And you can change it, but first you have to acknowledge it, just like they say for anything, and then you have to take action upon it. Well, the action can only go so far if your mind, if your internal subconscious isn't in alignment and agreement. And so there's something called the even more statement. And this totally changed me. I actually have on YouTube, um, if you put in Roya Mattis, how I lost 10 pounds without dieting, it talks about the rewiring. So I was hanging on to this 25 pounds from an adrenal crash that I had from a misprescribed prednisone drug. And I was operating at an 87 to 89 year old energy all the time. It took me three years to get my energy back. And I just kept hanging on to this weight. And so I discovered from a girlfriend this rewiring. And it goes like this. You pick three to five to thrive. Three to five messages you want to tell your subconscious mind that are now intentionally different within you than it was before. So for my health, I picked that I'm even more, I'm even more fit and I'm even more energized, for example. And every morning and every night, you say that before you go to bed. So let's say you want to be even more courageous. Let's say you want to be even more uh, you want to make even more than $500,000. If, if your brain stops at that, say 100000 whatever your next step is, say a million and a half. So I'm even more. And so when you say I am even more courageous, I'm even more than a half million dollar earner, I'm even more than, I'm even more fit and I'm even more energized. It bypasses your subconscious mind into agreement. So if you say I am, your subconscious will go, no, you're not. I'm fit. No, you're not. I'm courageous. No, you're not. But I'm even more, it, it starts to align and going, oh, you, well, we are that now. And we're even more of it. And surprisingly, when I started doing that for my fitness, the first month I felt nothing really, to be honest. This is about long-term life change transformation so every morning every night every time i didn't feel like it i'm even more fit and then all of a sudden i became aware oh my gosh i'm making more fit decisions i'm eating i want to eat something different now i'm wanting to work out i started working out in my own house and then a couple months later i wanted to go to the gym so it wasn't a, a push it became a flow so i invite you to start with the subconscious rewiring possibly try the even more statement. And then the things you have been resisting, this is how you can, we can become all the things we want is by starting with the subconscious. And that's why I talk love about it. transformation. Love it. love it, love it. So how do people find you? Um, you can find me on social media under Sheenus Tribe, S-H-E-N-E-S-S -S -S Tribe. I do coach men as well, well as women. My Unity Forum is exclusively for women in a private Facebook group, Sheena's Tribe. In private Facebook, we have a weekly uh, female speaker there every week just giving gifts. We believe in unification. And then I have a website, she-ness.com, embracing the freedom of she, S-H-E-N-E-S-S. Love it. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do more videos. And definitely, I know people are going to go check you out. I'd love, thank you for having me. This is such an incredible forum. I know that you're doing this constantly and what a give back section this is. I hope more and more people discover it because you're straight to the point, energetic, and and, and you can tell a heart for giving. So thank you for having me. Thank you me. so much. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Definitely stay safe and say hello to the little guy.
I want to do an interview with okay. him. Get him, get, get him, get him on Instagram. Well. Let's do a live with him. He's getting mommy in shape. Okay. Aria and Zayden, they both have brilliance. Aria is 11, my daughter. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, let's do it. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.